What's up, y'all? All right, so right now we are gonna do a, what I call a crappy little filing cabinet key for a crappy little filing cabinet key lock. Uh, this is a, seems to be plastic, everything except for the metal cam, uh, but the body of it's plastic of some kind. It's not metal and it holds in with these little clips. I guess it just snaps in to the filing cabinet. Uh, however, one of the problems that you find with these quote crappy little filing cabinet locks is the keys. Sometimes you don't have a key that may fit in the keyhole and of course to make a key you got to have a key that'll fit in the keyhole. So we're going to go through the keys real quick and see if we can't figure out what it is. With these types of filing cabinets you almost always first go for like a Y11 or Y12 or Y13. And uh, if we look really close at it, I'm gonna turn the flashlight on because you can't really see into it very well. We're having some focus problems, hold on. There we go. Uh, and look at the bottom left-hand corner. And we also see a little ledge on the right-hand side. So we get a good look at it. We see that bottom left hand is at the very, very bottom and the kind of the ridge that's sticking out on the right hand side is not very deep, but uh, when we get through, we're gonna check the Y11, the Y11 is not going in. We're gonna go up here to the Y13, <coughs> excuse me, Y13, the Y12. The Y13 starts to go in if you look at it, but it's actually not going in it's riding over that bottom ledge it's not going into the bottom ledge however this y13 also has this which would match up uh, but just to make sure we'll go through these other ones uh, y12 does not fit y14 does uh, kind of barely fits just like the other one so we could likely use either one of these if it would work Sometimes you'll run across the, the, these little funky locks like this. Funky, I said funky locks like this. And uh, they use some of these oddball, like double-sided keys. So I did, uh, before I started filming, I had gone through some of these keys, you know, to try to figure out if any of them fit. Since it's got that bottom ledge on that side, we're looking at keys that have a open bottom ledge there. And uh, we can see that. That works, but it, it still didn't, you know, it still didn't feel right. Uh, and, you know, you could use this. However, these keys, uh, it actually goes in pretty well, but it doesn't sit. If we look at it, it's sitting at an angle. So that's, that's not quite right either. Uh, so what we're going to do for this bad boy is uh, because this Y12, was it Y13? Because that groove matches up on that side. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to take off this bottom edge. We can do that. We can do that. If we look at this close up, zoom in, boom, there it is. Uh, this key, I believe, will work if we take off this ledge right here on this side. And to do that, uh, you could easily just lay it down on the counter and just start filing away. And eventually you will file it down however since i've got to make two of these we when we code cut keys like this we uh we provide two always with the price so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this over to the bench grinder and get this sped up a little bit
Certainly not the greatest grinding job, but that's okay. We can pair not the greatest grinding job with not the greatest filing cabinet lock. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take it down a little bit more. I don't think we need to file a whole lot of that down. Uh, this one turned out... Oh, it looks up for right there. Oh, no, let's try. may not need to do anything. Oh! It's a little sticky, but it's going in. Let's check this one. Okay, that one's much better. So let's go ahead and take off just a little bit of that. Yeah, there's the... There's the hump that's making it sticky. So we'll go ahead and just finish this part of it. Uh, I need a better file. There we go. All right, try both of our keys. They both go in pretty smooth. Uh, and now uh, this particular one, uh, you could take this clip off. I did kind of check it, um, but it's really, really, really tight, uh, and likely it'll come out. But you know, it's easier just to just just to make the key by sight reading it. Don't necessarily. I wouldn't want to necessarily impression this because it is plastic. It is a plastic core metal bracket but this part is plastic so you don't really want to put it through the stress of impressioning it impressioning it uh, so let us just sight read it and uh, I'm gonna put pressure this way I don't know necessarily which way this turns it feels like it turns to the right Clicky, clicky. Let's see if I can see if I can hold this. Okay, there we go. Yep. Oh, oh, there it goes. Okay, we're halfway. All right. So now what we're gonna do is look down in there. I'm gonna shine a light on this subject here. Actually, that's a good light right there. So the first thing I notice out of this thing is that first wafer is set really deep back. If we look at it, it almost looks like it's, these are going to be four or five wafer likely. But if we put our pick in here and go down and stop right there on that first wafer, that is a pretty good bit from the end of my finger. And if we hold that up to the key, We'll see that cut, most cuts start right there. We'd have one, two, three, four, five. But look at the, look at the depth on that. Uh, so I really think that may be, uh, what we'll probably do is use a CX32 card to do this. Cause it's kind of a generic, you could use hand clippers as well. Yeah, but if we look down in there, and, and then I know it's hard to see, but that first wafer is deep. Uh, so basically on the rule of thumb when you're doing, you know, sight reading, if you have it down to here, it would be a deep cut. If the, the tip of the wafer that you see right there, if it's up higher, it's going to be a shallower cut. So if it's here, that would be like a one and then a two and then a three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> uh, so we're definitely, we definitely know this is like a either a three or a four, right there. And uh, if you tilt it, we can see we can see another wafer, but there's a huge gap in the two wafers. So that tells me there's a wafer in between them, or this is just a really terrible lock. Um, but then we can see that. I'm assuming the third wafer there's a pretty good gap so that's definitely like uh, three and if you hold on the level if we kind of tilt it up and down this is this is perfectly horizontal those two wafers are pretty much the same height you know there's a lot of tolerance in these locks 
Um, so what I'll be guessing here is I'll be guessing that first one would be three or four. Then the one that we can't see hiding behind it, even if we tilt it, we can't really see that wafer. So we're gonna guess three, one, three. And uh, then not looking through the, okay, you can barely see it when I tilt it right there. If you see that little shiny spot right behind that wafer, that means there's a wafer right behind there. So three, one, or two, and then three again. And then behind it would probably be a two. You can barely see the tip of the wafer behind the third or fourth, whichever one you want to call it. So you got wafer one right there. Hattie wafer up behind this one that's the same height and then up behind that there's another one so i'm gonna guess uh you know three one three one something three one three one or four two four two one of the two will likely fit it so we're gonna move over to the code machine i'm gonna use the x32 which is kind of a generic card for you know generic Y11 or Y12 or whatever keys. See, 1011 will snap this back locked. Oh no. And we're gonna try, what do you think? It's always best to, to err on the side of caution. It's always best to do shallower so you don't waste a key, especially when you've, you know, modified a key. Uh, so, and since that first wafer is so far back and I only see four wafers, I'm actually gonna either skip the first cut or just cut it. Let's just skip it and start it too. Let's see what happens. So the first wafer, which is number two, I'm guessing. We're gonna go three. Um, yeah, we'll try three. One. Three. One. We're gonna check that. And if it doesn't turn, then we can go ahead and progress it down to the next one. Okay, it turned, but it's a little tight, so that's telling me we're off on one wafer. So at this point, we're going to use that, that mark to see about which wafer we're off on, or which wafers we're off on. Looks like this needs to be cut. So that little, so that little shiny spot right there. That's an indication. So let's cut that one down to a two. We could see that last wafer, so likely that's the trouble. So that is it. Three, one, and there is no cut in the front. I was guessing right. So three, one, three, two, and then I'm just going to turn this around to the duplicator and duplicate it real quick. If we would focus, focus. I did not brush it yet. That's okay. Kim pointed that out to me the other day when I was cutting a bunch of keys. She's like, you didn't brush them. I was like, yeah. That's kind of one of those rules where I, you know, I told you to always brush keys before you copy them, but do as I say and don't do as I do, you know? <laughs> do as I say and don't do as I do. That doesn't sound very good, talking about a woman. Do as I say, woman. Woman, do as I say. And uh, now that we have them both done, before our tripod will stay standing up, I'm gonna brush it. Both your keys work. And there we have it. Hand filing, hand, hand modifying a key and cutting it by sight reading on a crappy little filing cabinet key. And uh, normally our code keys or keys by code or keys by impression and run $15 to $20 depending on which keyway it is if it's some of these orange board we call it the orange board keys or the more expensive keys they can run upwards of twenty dollars but 
this is the standard key. Normally it would probably be 15 for the two, but because I had to modify it, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive since we had to modify it. And anybody, you can't, you can't just go buy this at, you know, you can't go to Home Depot or Walmart and buy this lock. You probably can't find it anywhere to tell you the truth. I know somebody out there in the lock force is gonna go, oh, that is part number so, so, and so, and so. However, it's not something that is as easily found, so you know that's a that's a decent price for a new set of keys to lock their filing cabinet up. Anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching, y'all. If you have any questions or comments, besides why my camera's being so stupid, post it in the comments section. I appreciate y'all watching, and uh, I don't know why my brush is still on, but it is. But we'll catch you next video. Thanks again.